Hello everybody and welcome to my 8th computer science lesson tutorial or whatever you want to call that. I have said that a lot of times already. But what we're going to do is sound. Now this is going to be our last lesson on data and how things are stored and like numbers and how computers process stuff. And this is our last one, and we're going to say bye-bye to data representation and stuff like that. And, yeah, this is probably our last one, and sound is, of course, the most, probably, the most difficult thing. And the next thing, we're going to do even more difficult things. So, it's rec um, recommended for you to watch all the videos before this, that's why it's, it's put in the playlist in a series. So you first watch the easy stuff to the most hard stuff in computer science or whatever. And let's just get started on sound. Now, just then, my intro, we had sound there. And that was stored into the computer, then played into your ears. Either your speakers or your headphones. And how is that even be processed and put into your ears? Now, that's what we're going to learn today. Alright, so, sound. Okay, they are the same as images, like I've said before. And uh, numbers and text, binary and, like, numbers and hexadecimals. Sound is also always processed in binary. Now, sounds are in waves, so sound waves are always analog and they change a lot so there is no specific value and if you like statistics it's continuous data all right now however computers have to process things with specific data they need to process things digitally and not anal a analogly or i don't think there's such word but you get my point all right now let's get here now Sampling and audio to digital converter, alright? So, because computers have to process things digitally, we need to convert that analog, that analog thing into a digital thing. So, what we do is we need to sample the waves and then store a digital representation of it. Now, when we sample it, we basically we can put it into a graph form and then we can see the peaks and the drops and everything in the graph and the computer basically measures it at certain intervals and I'll explain that now now here is basically a waveform of a sound and don't care about amplitude just think that as a you know frequency so at zero seconds it's around 0 0.7 I guess no 0 0.52 and what happens there is basically the computer records at zero seconds it is there and at one second it is around like 0 0.8 or something I I can't read graphs and two seconds it's at around like um let's say negative 0 0.1 or something and then that the computer records everything here now after it records that it will store it all right now storing it when we sample the sound and make it into numbers like i just did i said at zero seconds is as tens at tens frequency we can make it it's a number so then like i said before like i taught you before those numbers can co be converted into binary and then we can store it now yeah that brilliant and this process is basically an ADC audio digital converter and a certain part of your computer actually does that you either have a sound card or it's implemented on your motherboard and we're gonna go talk about that in our hardware section of these tutorials and be be sure to subscribe to stay for that so yeah now Let's talk about sample rates. Now, remember how I said samples are things where the data you receive and record at like zero and then it's at the frequency of three. Now, if we increase the sample frequency, it basically means that we are sampling more values on the curve. Now, I started from zero, it, zero like zero seconds, and it's around like 10, 10, the tenth frequency. 
and then I move on to one. Now that sound quality will be terrible. All right, you have to start at zero and probably 0 0.01 seconds, and then 0 0.002 seconds, and then then it will actually make a very nice sound. It will make it even closer to the original sound. So, measurement of sample rates. Like, as I said before, higher sample rate, better quality. Now, 48 KHZ means the audio is sampled 48,000 um, records per second. Now, it records um, the things that I just said, zero at zero seconds. It is blah, blah, blah frequency. And this does it 48,000 seconds per uh, three. 8,000 samples per second. Now people can't hear the difference when it gets to high sample rates, so it doesn't really matter when it gets really high. But then if it's like one per second, then that's probably gonna do like a weird retarded sound that we do not want. And I'm probably gonna do this in Adobe Premiere, and I'm probably set this audio to 32 KHS. And that'll be 32,000 uh, samples per second. And yeah, I'll probably do that. And I'm doing that right now. And bitrate. Bitrate is very important too. It basically means the number of bits you have to capture the audio. Alright. So you have bits, zeros and ones, and you have to capture the audio with the bits. And more bits allow us to record more pressure levels, the volume. And yeah, that's basically it on sound. And basically, let's run through the process again right you have audio file and basically how it stores it is basically it takes uh... the waveform and puts it onto a graph and then it records the samples the samples on it and then when it gets the samples those are numbers they convert it into binary and then you can save it and that can represent that data of that sound and after the sound you can always open it and when you open it it records and it uses those bits and like all those binary numbers they convert it back to that waveform and play it into your ears and there is a special device in your computer that does this it's either your sound card if you bought one or your computer has one or it's implemented on your motherboard or if it's a laptop I have no idea how laptops work I have never built one so yeah that's it on sound, and this is the last video on data representation and data and everything else, and I'll see you next time on a next topic. See you guys next time.